Welcome to this special edition of the Commissioner's Report, where we will be hearing from Commissioner John Hall and our Clerk of Court, Stacy Butterfield. First up is Commissioner John Hall. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me again. Today, Commissioner, we're going to focus on a county initiative that is very near and dear to your heart, and one that's on the front line for community and economic development in Polk County, our building division. Before you were elected a county commissioner, you served our citizens for 35 years and attained the position of uh, facilities, building, and code enforcement director. You were a busy man. <laughs> Yes, I was. Uh, it, uh, every one of those divisions uh, are really active. Uh, facilities management, uh, we manage approximately 3.6 million square feet scattered over uh, 2,000 square miles. Uh, and uh, at the point in time I was there, we had a workforce of about 120 people. Yes, sir. Uh, the economic downturn has, uh, has taken that staff down. And we've gotten some new technologies that have helped in efficiencies. The, uh, the building and codes, uh, when I went in, it was during the, uh, or right before actually, the building boom, and uh, we needed to take a look at some of the things that we were doing, some, uh, some maybe uh, processes that were no longer necessary, and it's just the same way that we had been doing business for years and years. So we, uh, we did that and streamlined the process to uh, speed up the building uh, permitting you know, if when people come in and they want to get a permit, uh, they want to go to work. Uh, and uh, that's what we were doing, uh, just making sure they could. Yes, sir. Things are apparently picking up in Polk County. Single family residential permitting is tracking considerably higher this year than last year. And this July, uh, there were 148 single family homes permitted. Add to this an uptick in commercial development and the fact that values for our land are increasing, we may be on to something good. Well, hopefully so. I hope that this is just not a minor rebound and uh, that we actually continue to move upward. And uh, Polk County, if, if this is truly uh, coming out of this economic downturn, we're positioned perfectly uh, to continue our growth uh, between two very large metropolitan areas, one uh, to our west, Tampa, and one to our east, Orlando. And we still have a lot of our land mass still left buildable. And there's jobs that are going to be coming open uh, in those large metropolitan areas. They're, they're only uh, an hour or so away. And I think that's going to bode well for us as far as the housing market goes. As far as the commercial market goes, we still have a lot of good things that are going on in our commercial market and again, we've got a lot of land mass left buildable and we're working with uh, people that want to um, relocate and I think that uh, we give them uh, enough incentive that they'll take a good look at Polk. Yes sir, you know there's some home run projects <laughs> going on. Florida Polytechnic University, the Clear Springs Advanced Technology Center, Legoland Florida, the CSX Intermodal Logistics Center, a $700 million expansion at TECO, south of Mulberry and Streamsong, among others. So, as you said, we're in a good position. Oh, we're in an excellent position, uh, and that's just a few of the things that, that are going on. And um, just before the Board of County Commissioners in the last two sessions, we have approved some uh, some incentives to bring other companies yes, in, sir. new companies, and some expansions of, of some already existing companies uh, to the tune of uh, the possibility of nearly 600 new jobs. And when you can start putting people back to work, where we have uh, we've been uh, in a really economic downturn and, and had a bad uh, unemployment rate, we start putting people back to work and our economy starts to rebound and hopefully it's something we can keep up. Speaking of new jobs, uh, you're our liaison to Career Source Polk, which used to be called Polk Works. Uh, if we're truly coming out of the recession, then job growth has got to be one of the leading factors. Job growth is uh, one of the leading factors, and uh, kudos to, to Stacy Campbell Dominique and her staff. Uh, but it's not just them; it's uh, their work with the private sector. Um, it's, it's how do you get the people, uh, how do you get them interviewed and how do you get the jobs? And, they, and they're working on that now. That's a uh, you know, new program they've got started. How to, how to fill out an application, how to actually interview. 
but uh, they're going out and getting with our, our private sector and saying, you know, basically what jobs do you have available and how can we match the talent pool that we have that's unemployed with your jobs? They've done an excellent job at that and they continue uh, to do that. Okay, so if the economy is improving and we're adding new jobs, that must correlate to a busier building department. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, back in the uh, uptick uh, in uh, 2005, 6, 7, uh, before the uh, economic downturn and the, the bubble burst, uh, the building department was really busy. They're starting to see some of that again, uh, and um, we're not back to where we were, and I, I'm not sure that we will ever get there because that was somewhat uh, an artificial inflation of our economy, but uh, we're going to get uh, much higher than we are at present and uh, we've got some economies and, and some uh, efficiencies that we put in place down there and I think that uh, we're ready. We're ready for the next uh, uptick in our, in our economy and uh, the building permitting process. You know the building department is an integral component of the county's development review committee process to help businesses. Um, the development re review committee is essentially made up of professionals from the planning department, engineering, natural resources, traffic engineering, utilities, the fire marshal's office, the school board, and the county manager's office. What's the purpose of this development review committee? Uh, the purpose of the, of the uh, development review committee is actually to help someone that wants to start either a, um, a business or uh, a subdivision, uh, some construction project and it's to kind of help shepherd them through the processes and it puts everyone in the same room that has a comment instead of the old process where uh, we would um, all sit in our own little cubicles or our own little silos. Like okay. Uh, yes, and, <laughs> and and we would take the plans and one person would review them and then they would go to someone else and a very long and cumbersome process. Yes, and now we have uh, the Development uh, Review Committee, all the appropriate people are in the same room and it should uh, be working to speed up the process. We've still got some glitches that we've got to work through uh, as, um, as most any uh, organization does, but I think uh, overall, with the way that we're set up right now and the, the people that are in the room, it, it helps uh, as a, a development uh, project or uh, a, um, a permitting, a uh, large commercial permitting comes online. In fact, I believe that Polk County has a reputation in Central Florida of being a little bit more efficient in helping people get their permits faster than maybe some of the larger metropolitan areas. Uh, there's some folks who say the smaller the government unit, the better for getting things done. Do you agree? Oh, yes. Um, we had. Um, at one point in time, uh, even back uh, during the building boom, when we were issuing, uh, you know, up to a thousand uh, permits a month, uh, that was our our high, I believe, a thousand and eight. Um, we um, were turning those things over at a rate of a, about seventy-nine to eighty minutes on a residential permit. If you came in with all of the information, there's ten pieces of information that you need, and if you came in with all that information filled out and ready to go, then you could walk out of our building uh, department with a permit in, in less than an hour and a half. So uh, we've got a reputation and we had uh, several different counties and cities come to take a look at our process to see how we're doing that, uh, how we've positioned ourselves to get that uh, uh, permit out of our doors that quick. In fact, I think the, the Board of County Commissioners has set up an expedited permit review project for, I guess it's some of the larger projects that come to us from the Central Florida Development Council. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have, and uh, that works really well, and especially works well when a project is going into a, uh, a future land use that's already uh, zoned or, okay. or designated for that project. Okay. So if it's already designated, uh, and we have all the uh, the people in the room that we need and a, a lot of that is uh, driven by concurrency. 
you know, uh, will the roadways handle it? Will the drainage handle it? Will the water and sewer handle it? Uh, if it's a large residential area, uh, like a subdivision, what are, the, what are the schools in the area and, and can they handle uh, that many students without uh, overburdening the, the classrooms there? So uh, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into it that uh, we probably do not go into often enough with our constituency to let them know that it's not just a, a very short or easy task. As a longtime Polk County resident, you know better than almost anybody that we're transitioning from an agricultural to an yes. urban setting. You might say we're herbal. How does this transition play into the future of the building department and permitting? Well, it's going to get busier uh, as, as uh, we come back from this economic downturn. It's going to um, have uh, have more of an impact on the number of people that we see but we have now on online uh, permitting applications so that you do not uh, so it, it's an electronic plan submittal and application submittal so that our hopefully our lobbies do not get overfilled with people as we start back uh, in this uh, uptick um, there's a lot of things that uh, that are driven in this, and uh, you know, um, government regulations from the federal, the state, the county. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that uh, we have to consider when we're when we're doing this, and we have to balance property rights with those regulations. And uh, and when necessary, we have to uh, we have to intervene on some of our constituents' behalf because of that. As we wrap up this session today, Commissioner. During your tenure in the building department, you established the Joe Mac Morris Award. And that brings a smile to my face because I know Joe Mac. What is that award all about? Well, a lot of people say it's actually about uh, customer service, but it's not. Uh, the Joe Mac Morris Award is about customer satisfaction okay, because you, you can have customer service without having customer satisfaction. <laughs> Uh, and um, Joe was uh, just the, the consummate uh, professional when it came to making sure that the citizens of Polk County uh, were satisfied and, their, and especially with their interaction with us. And I think that his legacy lives on through that award and hopefully that we can bring that to the forefront with, with other uh, divisions. So uh, cust uh, the, the employees in the building department and codes, et cetera, they, who, who makes the pick? Who, how do, who gets that award? Well, you know, how, do you, uh, how does that happen? The names are actually uh, given to uh, the supervisors, uh, you know, and uh, anyone that's uh, an employee there can, can uh, nominate uh, one of their coworkers for uh, the award. And that's uh, rightfully so. If you see someone beside you that's doing an excellent job and they have a smile on their face, and sometimes our our job uh, is a little bit tough because we meet with people, especially in code enforcement, that are not real happy with coming to see us. And when you get a person that uh, can smile through that uh, ordeal, then uh, maybe they should be considered as far as that uh, we call it a customer service, Joe Mac customer service, but it's a customer satisfaction award. Well, thank you, Commissioner, for being with us today. And please stay tuned uh, as in a few minutes, we're gonna bring up uh, our clerk of the court, Stacy Butterfield, who's gonna be speaking to us about a brand new program that she's established. Take care. Thank you. Way back in 1789, people were noticing some things our new Constitution didn't take care of. So the first Congress came up with 10 changes, or amendments, which became known as the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment is important because Congress actually told itself what it could not do. If written using today's language, the First Amendment would say, you can't pass laws that keep people from practicing their religion. You can't pass laws that keep people from speaking their minds or publishing their ideas. And you can't pass laws that stop folks from getting together peacefully to express their views to their people in government. This amendment, plus the others in the Bill of Rights, reassured the nation that the powers of their new government would have limits. As President George Washington said, the amendments strengthened our characteristic rights. Quick, what year did women across America get the vote? If you said 1920, give yourself an A+. 
That's hard to believe in today's world. Now, what year was the first woman elected to Congress? This may be hard to believe too, but it was before 1920. 1916 to be exact. Her name was Jeanette Rankin and she was elected to the House of Representatives from the state of Montana. Like many pioneers, she opened the door for women all across America to seek and win office in Washington. And that includes the woman who was elected to the most powerful position in Congress, Nancy Pelosi of California, who became Speaker of the House in 2007. Although women make up slightly over 50% of the U.S. population today, only about 20% of the members of Congress are women. What do you think those numbers will be when your generation is voting? Welcome back to the special edition of the Commissioner's Report. It's special today because we're now joined by our Clerk of Courts, mm -hmm. Stacy Butterfield, and Lita McHugh, mm -hmm. who is the manager of the Department of Inspector General. Welcome to the program, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you here. New program, Inspector mm -hmm. General has, I'm, I'm sure, services. Mm -hmm. What's this all about, Stacy? Well, DG, thanks for the invitation. Yes, we love the opportunity to come and share with our viewers about some of our services at the clerk's office. And we have added a Department of Inspector General. And the Department of Inspector General is basically has three main functions. It serves as the internal auditor to the Board of County Commissioners, which was in place previously. Yes, but in addition, we've added two other functions to the Inspector General. One is um, audits of court-appointed guardianships where um, we perform audits of those guardianship accounts for those wards, those individuals that um, aren't capable of taking care of themselves, and so we have a guardian, and they're required to do an accounting, so we audit that to protect the ward's assets. And then we also have an investigative function. Our investigative function is our newest function, where we are looking to prevent, reduce, and detect fraud, waste, or abuse. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very excited about that um, and we have uh, been working hard to establish the office. Lita joined us last February. She's been working and we're working for an accreditation through the Florida Commission on Law Enforcement. So we're happy to um, roll the program out. Okay, so you have this expanded <laughs> role be beyond the internal audits. Can you explain audit versus investigation? Yes, sir. We, in an audit, you take a look based on risk of all the programs that are out there, and you have a planned, detailed audit program where you're going to go in and basically look at every, everything, so to speak, from A to Z. It's just more, um, uh, it's more of a planned issue. Whereas an investigation results from information that we receive, whether we receive it uh, directly from uh, someone telling us, a phone call through our website, and we get uh, a tip or whatever you want to call it, information mm -hmm. that says there's suspected fraud, waste, or abuse. So then we investigate it. It's usually shorter in nature, very specific to a specific point. Okay, and do you all have benchmarks or accreditation for this program? Yes, yes, that's one of the things that we're pretty proud of. Um, the Florida Commission on Law Enforcement has an accredited program for Inspector General's departments that have been established. Okay. And we are in the process of obtaining that accreditation. It's about a two-year program, Liam. Yes. And through that, um, we have to establish standards, go through training, all of our auditors have to be trained. And we're proud to say that there's only two other clerk's offices in the state that have obtained this. And we hope to have our accreditation completed, hopefully by the end of this calendar year. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. You know, Madam Clerk, you have a uh, reputation of, of, of hiring bright, industrious, folks into your department and I'm sure it's no different with Lita and her staff. Tell us about the folks who've been hired Absolutely. to uh, fill out this office. You are exactly right. We have a talented group of staff I'm and sure. I'm very, very <laughs> fortunate. And we have Lita and I was very fortunate to bring uh, Lita with to the clerk's office and she's a certified public accountant as well as some of our auditors are certified internal auditors um, and they also have, um, through the accreditation program, they're certified inspector generals and certified inspector general auditors. Okay, very good. Um, now let's go into the, uh, the functions of the office. Uh, first of all, let's look at internal auditor. Okay, the internal auditor's goal is to 
um, basically look at programs based on risk. And that means look at those where either a dollar value or just inherently risky type activities like cash handling and audit those mm -hmm. things. Um, and we also um, try to look at the internal controls that are in place to make sure that those are proper to prevent um, fraud, waste, or abuse. That's okay. part of our... And then you, you, you spoke at the top of the program about the guardianship program. Yes. Um, whenever someone is unable to legally act on their behalf, um, and usually it's elderly, accident victims, then a guardian is appointed by the court. In that process, that guardian has to take care of their money and their financial transactions. They mm -hmm. file those reports with the court, and we have an auditor dedicated mm -hmm. to auditing those guardianship reports. So we are looking to help protect the most vulnerable citizens that we have. Well, that's very important. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the humanitarian part of mm -hmm. the program. Uh, the fraud, waste, and abuse. There's a hotline, I believe. Yes, there let's, is. Let's get into There's that a, a hotline. Bit. Absolutely, yes, the investigative function. So we are trying to spread the word throughout the county and as many places mm -hmm. as we can that we have a fraud hotline that you can okay. report suspected fraud, waste, or abuse. Um, the team has undergone some extensive training, so they mm -hmm. know how to handle this. When that phone call rings, when that mm -hmm. phone rings yes, um, during the day between eight and five, it will be staffed. It will be answered and they're gonna take the information and they will speak directly to an investigator. And hopefully, they will give us enough information. It has to be a detailed, specific report. Generalizations, we can't investigate. We have to have something to work from. We can't have, a, oh, we think the other day, you know, um, somebody stole a piece of equipment. Okay, who, when, where, or if it's not the who, what, you know, describe for us. Um, so we, we have several ways to do that we can talk about. And fraud, what is fraud? What's well, the definition know, of fraud? Fraud is misappropriation of assets. Fraud is forgery, alteration of documents, um, improper reporting, just flat out theft is fraud. And uh, the public, uh, unfortunately, perhaps thinks of some a uh, lot of time of government they're oh they're wasting time or Correct. they're mm -hmm. abusing their their powers <clears throat> etc so what about this area yeah in waste and abuse that's mm -hmm. where it is a perception yeah. potentially could be perception that there is a waste of county resources but you and I know by and large the the people who work with the family of county government the Board of County Commissioners, the Sheriff's Office, your office, mm -hmm. the other constitutional, they're hardworking, they dedicated They are hardworking yes, individuals. <laughs> they are, and we don't doubt that for one minute. Yes, yes, this program, we take a critical eye, but we have a mechanism for anybody that feels like they have information on fraud, waste, or abuse, or you know any abuse, to let us know. And if it is something that needs to be investigated, we will. It may not be substantiated. As a matter of fact, we had one already, and we investigated it, and it was unsubstantiated. Correct. And so, and it was over. Okay. And let's turn to Toledo. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the show sure. again. Uh, you've been with us for what? One year? Year and a yeah. half. Over. Okay. Mm -hmm. And overall, with the county. Um, since 1999, I have worked with the external auditors, um, auditing various programs of the oh, county. Very good, and congratulations mm -hmm. on your new position. Uh -huh. Let's get into what should the public report or not report. Okay. Yeah. Well, what to re what what should be reported, or uh, let's say this: what not to report. Yes, ma'am. Um, general complaints or suggestions. That's not what we're here for. Um, we need, as Stacy said, very detailed, specific information. Who? Who did what? What happened? What's the activity? When did it happen? How often does it happen? Um, also, we don't want unsupported or vague allegations such as, oh, you need to look at so-and-so or you need to look at this activity. I think there's something wrong there. We need very specific information or it would be a waste of our time to you know, open an investigation. Also, any kind of violent threat, obviously, we're not going to deal with that. We're going to turn that over to law enforcement immediately. And then also personnel issues. If you have a bad experience, we have a county management that's very responsive to any you know, citizen or uh, resident's complaints and take that to county management. Um, I think that, that pretty well covers what not to report. Um, but what to report, obviously yes. give us as much information as you can. And if you wanna remain anonymous, you can do so, but we ask that you might wanna call back so we can ask follow-up questions. 
Okay, well back to Stacy mm -hmm. and uh, we've only been doing this a year, or maybe a little over a year. Tell us about some of the accomplishments already of, of the program. Well, it's been a busy year, <laughs> and the biggest accomplishment is establishing the program. Yes, ma'am. That, um, that's a big undertaking, um, and staffing the program. Uh, Lita has um, four additional staff members along with her, and actually uh, of the total of five, four of the five have been hired since last year. We only had one person mm -hmm. in the office um, when it was internal audit that's still with us. So we had to hire, I wanted mm -hmm. to hire the manager, Lita came on board, mm -hmm. she then hired um, qualified staff. So we um, have been working on staffing, secondly okay. on submitting our application for accreditation which involves some very rigorous standards. Lita has been responsible for developing the policies and procedures. What do you do when that phone rings? What information? How do you act? What do you do with it? How do you investigate it? What does the report need to look like? As she mentioned, if there's something that is violent or something that is clearly evident mm -hmm in the beginning that is a criminal activity, then we are gonna turn it over to the appropriate law enforcement. We are not going to take the place of law enforcement. We have no intent on doing that. And so we would give the appropriate information and they would handle it from there, whatever the appropriate agency is. So um, the standards have been developed. We've had what's called a peer review. That's where the um, Florida Commission sends someone in to look at us um, to see if we're getting the program up and running according to their standards and we're working towards the final review of that. In addition to all of those administrative type duties, we have conducted three audits that we have completed and issued to the Board of County Commissioners, six projects, and the difference is that projects is just a little shorter in nature. Yes, um, and one investigation has been completed. We have two other calls recently um, that are, we're wrapping those up, 149 chip guardianship audits, and that's since July of 2013. And then we've also assisted the external auditors because we do assist in the external financial audit each year as it comes. Uh, usually in the fall and winter areas. So we've had a busy year <laughs> and we expect it to like get it. busier because we have um, a lot of information out mm -hmm. with the public and we hope that the public will use this information to let us know if they think something mm -hmm. is not appropriate. Okay and what's that the phone number and the the web address and we'll, we'll put it up on the screen here. Oh sure okay. the phone number is area code 863-534 Seven six eight nine. Uh, the web address is polkcountyclerk.net, and you just look for the Inspector General link, and that will take you where there you can report fraud on our little web form, or you can email me directly. Well, very impressive results. Again, you're very innovative and responsive to the needs of our citizens, Madam Clerk. Thank you for being on the program, Lita. Nice to meet you. Congratulations on your position, and I know you're going to do well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Well, this is your host, Jim D. Gennaro, uh, reminding you to tune in next month where we, where we will be hearing from two county commissioners who will be discussing the programs and policies that are important to our 626,000 residents in Polk County. Until then, please take care and enjoy this beautiful community we call home.